All right, in this video, we're going to move on to part three. So I'm going to go up to this icon in the upper left, open up this folder, click on the up arrow to go up a folder, and we're going to go on to part three matrices underscore one right here. All the files that I demonstrate in these videos are going to be available through a link in the description to a Google Drive folder. So open that one up. I say select folder. It looks almost empty, but it is not. Over here, we see in the current folder window, there's actually a bunch of files. We're going to do part 15, uh, matrix, funks, tables, and sort. I'm going to open that one up. Now, first thing you see is note to self. I'm going to make this into three separate videos. So that's my note, and that's what I'm going to do. We're going to do functions on this video, tables on the next one, sorting on the video after that. Okay. And these are still just built-in MATLAB functions. We're not writing our own functions yet. We will get to that. I'll run the first section here to clear off back to a blank slate. Control enter. Most functions that operate on numbers also work on vectors and matrices in MATLAB, but maybe not in the way that you'd expect. And by the way, I'm going to try and keep remember to say this. I'll certainly note it. All the code that I'm going to show works exactly as written in Octave as well, unless I say otherwise. So let's get into it. I'm going to run this section. Just click anywhere in this section and do Control Enter. I'm going to resize my window and then try that again. Control Enter. All right, this will be a little bit easier to read. There we go. Okay, so here's matrix A. I just threw some random numbers into a matrix, and there it is displayed out from display A right there. Max is a built-in MATLAB function. If I do max parentheses A, I'm going to get not just one number, not the overall maximum, but the maximum in each separate column. Most MATLAB functions operate on every column separately. And if you think about like Excel spreadsheets or whatever and how spreadsheets are often used, this isn't that far off from what many people would want out of their data. Often you're trying to run the same statistic on every separate column of whatever data you've gathered. Maybe you've gathered data from each different day of the week and you want to compare maximum values between different days of the week. This would be what you would want. Okay, so I said maximums equals max parentheses A, so I put those three numbers, 9, 5, 6, into a new variable that I named maximums, and so this is a vector of three numbers, and then I display it out, and this is what I see. Scrolling on down, mean to get the averages, and I named my variable averages, and then I display it out. This gives me the average of each of the three columns. As I mentioned in a previous video, MATLAB changes the amount of spacing allotted to the numbers if some of the numbers have decimal places. So this actually doesn't fit on my screen because of my large uh, font size that I'm using. So that's, that's why that displayed differently. But this is the average of the first column. Two is the average of the second column. And three is the average of the third column. Median. So what's the median of each column? There they all are. Again, a vector of three numbers that I put into a variable named medians. And the same thing with sum. Sum of A, I put it into a variable named sums. I get three values. I get a vector, uh, which I display out right there, and that's what I see. It's very important in MATLAB. I'm going to tell you this now, and I'm going to show you an example of why it's important a little bit later, to not name your variables the same thing as any built-in MATLAB functions, because MATLAB will prioritize the variable name that you gave over the default function name. So if instead of sums equals sum a, I named it sum, what would happen is a variable named sum would be created and the results of this function call would be put into that variable. But if I ever tried to use sum in the future without clearing out my workspace, I wouldn't be able to use it as a function because it's not a function anymore. Now it refers to a vector of three numbers. And that can be very confusing and frustrating. And don't panic, like if you're new to MATLAB, and if you're not new to MATLAB, why are you watching these videos? If you accidentally name a variable the same as some built-in function because you weren't aware that that function existed, it's not the end of the world. I'm also going to show you how to fix that. Just be aware that if you're aware that a function exists named median, don't name any of your variables median. At the very least, medians. Or abbreviate it, or just come up with some other naming convention. Continuing on down. All right, in this section, I'm going to show you how to get, what if you want the overall mean? What if you want the mean of everything, or the max, or the median, or whatever? I'm going to run Control Enter, and scroll up a little bit. Okay, so here's matrix A. I'm still using that same matrix from the previous section. Note, I did not use clear. I have not deleted my workspace. I've just used CLC to clean off the command window. I'm also switching into format loose. I recommend this if you ever temporarily want double spacing. Like, I don't, in general, want double spacing, but for this example, I do. So I switch into format loose at the top, and then scrolling down slightly, 
at the very bottom, I just switch it back into Format Compact. And this formatting will persist through the rest of my document. So I just do a brief switch into double spacing and then switch right on back when I'm done. All right, so I display A, there's A right there. Well, one really easy and effective way to figure out the overall average, median, max, sum, whatever you want of a matrix, and it works in Octave as well as MATLAB, is to use this parentheses colon notation. So what I'm doing on this line of code is I'm putting into a new vector named column vect all of the values from A stacked on top of each other into a single column. So you can see over here, 149, 149. 2, 5, negative 1 is the second column. Those get stacked beneath the first column. And then the third column over here gets stacked beneath that. And it scrolls off my screen slightly, but there it is. And then, since all of these functions operate on a per column basis, we just take the mean of that single column and we get the overall average of the entire matrix, which is 3.2 repeating. We could have done this a little bit shorter by simply saying, give me the mean of parentheses A, parentheses colon, but I'm trying to keep things real basic and not do overwhelming numbers of parentheses too soon. But you can also like space this out to make it easier to read, and that would just do it all in one step. Now, alternatively, we can say, give me the mean of A, comma, and then in single quotes and apostrophes, all of just everything. And this display is slightly off the bottom of the screen. There it is right there. It gives me the same result. And this all works for maximums, minimums, means, medians, sums. However, this line of code does not work in Octave. You cannot put the all in any of these functions. This is a MATLAB only thing. But this technique up here, whether you do it in a couple different steps with different variable names, or you do it like this all in one step, does work in Octave, works perfectly. As I mentioned before, you must be careful not to name your variables the same as a function. And you won't even know you made a mistake necessarily. So here I do make the mistake on purpose. I say max equals the maximum of A. And then I display it out, and this works fine. There's the result. Now I say it works fine, but here's the thing. This code down here in the next section is literally the exact same code as up here. The comments are slightly different, but that has no effect. And so what if I run this next section down here, control enter? It doesn't work, it gives me an error. This can be so confusing because we ran the exact same code twice and it worked the first time and it didn't work the second time. The reason it didn't work the second time is because this max right here no longer refers to the max function. It now refers to a vector valued variable that has the numbers nine, five, and six in it. In fact, if we go over to the command window over here, and clear it off, and I say max by itself, what I get is a vector. I can literally even index into it. Max parentheses, what's your second value? It's that five there. Max, what's your first value? It's the nine there. But I can't say max parentheses of matrix A because it doesn't know how to do that. Matrix A, remember, is a big old matrix, all these numbers right here. So how do we fix this? Well, good news, scrolling on down, you just use clear. So control enter, it's all cleared off. Now, unfortunately that deleted A, so I'd have to recreate A, but if I go back on up and I run this section, uh, no, sorry, I gotta go back up further and where did I create A? I created it right here, I run this section, control enter, I scroll back on down and then I want the maximums. Now again, this is not the good way to do it, but Let's change it to maxes with an S, and I run it, and it works, and I can keep running it. All right, let's just even clear it off again, just to demonstrate that I really am rerunning it. Control Enter, and it works. Now, now this is totally fine, because I didn't name it max, I named it maxes. None of these or any other built-in function names should ever be used as variable names. Now, you might ask, what if I change clear? I mean, clear is my command that's going to fix things going to get rid of the workspace and so I can try again with a different variable name. But what if I put clear in the workspace? Don't do this unless you want to play with it and I'll show you how to fix it. Control enter. And so it seems innocent enough. There's clear right there. And you know, well, what if I try and clear things? Well, it's seven now. It's not an action anymore. It's, it's a variable name for the value of seven. Now the good news is you can just do clear clear and that will delete it. I It's kind of funny. I kind of think of this as just like, no, seriously, MATLAB, I mean it, get rid of clear. 
An important note, this clear clear thing doesn't work in octave. When I first did this line in octave, clear equals seven, I was like, oh no, I've totally broken it. No, what you can do though, is you can go over to your workspace in octave. I'll demo this at the end of the video and you just right click and you can rename the variable. And you could also do that in MATLAB. So, you know, it's not terribly different, but clear clear does not work once you've run clear equals some number in octave. There's a hidden ability of the max function. I say it's hidden. Um, we saw in an earlier video that the size function can get you more than one result and you can capture those multiple results in multiple variables. Well, you can do the same thing with max. Let me run this section, control enter. So I've got this matrix A right here and I wanna know not only what are its maximum values in each column, but where are those values located? And so instead of just one single variable equals max parentheses A, I put two variables inside of square brackets with a comma in between. This is very similar to how we did size in an earlier video where I did like rows, let me just do R and C just for brevity. R and C equals the size of matrix A. And look, R is three, C is three. They are different. One of them is the number of rows, one of them is columns. Like if I change my dimensions of A here and then try that again, right? Now the rows is two and the columns is three, right? So it's just on the left side of the equal sign, more than one variable, in this case, just two, to capture or receive or just hold on to the multiple results that some MATLAB functions can provide. All right, I'm using control Z to undo back to the way it was before. And I'm gonna rerun this section, control enter. So if I run max in this fashion with two buckets, two variables to hold results on the left side, I get two results. If I only have one bucket, I only get one result, only the maximums. And then I display them out here. So I display the maximum value in each column. And then in which row are each of those maximums located? So the nine is located in row three, the five is located in row two, and the six is also located in row two. Just for emphasis, for reminder, these variables are vectors. I can index into them. I can ask indexes, what is your third value? Or what is the row of the largest value in column three? And so, well, that's the value in indexes at position three. And it's this two right here, which is this particular two. One thing that I always harp on about is naming variables. Let's scroll up briefly back to the section where I've got these, these functions, max, mean, median, and sum. And my variable names are maximums, averages, medians, and sums. So I emphasize the importance of not naming your variables the same thing as a function, but I wanna go beyond that. Variables should be named as nouns or noun phrases. Functions should be named as verbs or verb phrases. Now, even the professionals will violate this rule because they are lazy. And laziness is not always a bad thing. Laziness and efficiency are often the same thing. So often we want to be lazy. We want to make our own lives easier. However, I think that we should make our lives easier in the long term, not just in the short term. So I think max is a bad function name. Now, yes, it's more typing to name it like calculate max or something like that, or even just abbreviate it like calc max or even get max perhaps. But I think these are better function names. Now it is a verb phrase because it's an action, right? Verbs are actions, functions are actions. They do something. Variables are not actions. They're storage for information. They're nouns, they're things. So I will probably even break my own rule from time to time because occasionally I'm being a little bit lazy and short-sighted. However, I recommend you name all your variables as nouns or noun phrases. And when we get into the section naming functions, naming our own functions, you should name your own functions as verbs or verb phrases. Even the built-in MATLAB functions will violate this rule all the time because they're lazy and they don't wanna to have to type out extra words and letters but I think this is a bad practice and a bad habit to be in. And it leads to this confusing error where we're tempted to create variables that are the same as our functions. However, if one of them is always a verb phrase and the other one is always a noun phrase, we will never run into that problem. That's my soapbox for this video. Moving on. Let me show just very briefly some of those differences in octave. 
All right, here I am over in Octave. Remember, uh, we can't just run particular sections divided by the percent percent space, but I can highlight certain code and then press F9. All right, funny story. Uh, F9 worked when I ran Octave by itself and tested it out, but then when I run my recording software and hit F9, it actually cuts off my audio input. So anyway, continuing on with the video. All right, and there's Matrix A displayed out and uh, it's in the workspace, scrolling on down. And then I can run this code to display out the overall average of the entire matrix. And all the other code works as well. And there it is, 3.22222 right there. And we displayed a vertically right there, right? So the this notation for stacking a matrix's columns vertically also works. But this right here does not. And if I try and run it... Oh, so you know what? I'm wrong. This actually does work. I got confused because I didn't test this. <laughs> uh, I actually just tested this one right here. And this, so I added the all to sum. That one does not work. So apparently this all extra input to the function has been implemented for some of the octave functions, but not of the other, but not all of them. So you'll just have to experiment or just use this technique of using the matrix variable name, parentheses, colon. That one always works guaranteed. Now, the one other thing that I want to emphasize that is different is that issue of clearing out the workspace. So scrolling on down, now this should rarely, if ever, happen, but let's create a variable named clear in Octave. So I highlight that code, run selection. All right, and so I ran that line of code, and now I have a variable over here named clear. Now, the problem arises when I try to clear clear, when I try and get rid of it. And so clear clear worked in MATLAB, but if I hit enter, it says, nope, can't do that because clear is no longer a function. It's now this variable over here. It's numeric. So how do we fix this? And maybe there's other ways to do it, but this is the way I would do it. You just go down to your workspace on the left, right click on clear, rename, and you just give it a different name. Just call it X. And the benefit of this is now there's X down here. And now clear, the only thing that it could refer to is the command, the action of getting rid of the contents of your workspace. So I hit enter and my workspace gets deleted. 